Hi, this is uh, my close friend and colleague, Dr. Joshua Hirsch. I would like to, we both would like to thank Dr. Veith for having this conference for the last 50 years. He has drawn people from all over the world for many, many years and has endeared everybody to the level of scientific knowledge we all gain, how device companies, drug companies come here knowing you're going to see the world's leader in interventional skills. He's brought vascular surgeons, neurosurgeons, neurologists, radiologists, interventional radiologists, and many other practitioners to come here to learn from the world's best leaders in uh, vascular surgery and interventional techniques. And I've seen this conference grow over the last 25 years that I've been here incredibly. And I'm very proud to be his, his friend. And I've learned so much from Frank over the years. And I'm really proud to be here. And I think 50 years says something about um, someone's career who is uh, world class and um, has done something very, very special um, for patients, for our societies, and for medical centers that he's worked for. Thank you, Alan. Dr. Veith is certainly a uh, class act, and 50 years says a lot. I say that because, you know, I just had my 22nd birthday, so it's hard for me to imagine what 50 years would be like. But I think uh, congratulations to Dr. Veith in recognizing that there's a role for neuro at this conference. I think you've been hosting neuro programming for 25 years now. Is that correct? Yes, uh, I've been honored to work here and have colleagues from all over the world come and talk about how neurovascular um, is meaningful and it complements the um, carotid world as well as the cardiac world and the peripheral vascular world. And we all work very hard to maintain patients' health. Stroke care has evolved incredibly over the last 25 years. When I started, we would actually struggle for an hour or two to put a catheter in the brain and inject urokinase or TPA, a thrombolytic, to break up clot. And it was a few cases a year at most. And I'm sure you remember that also. Oh, yeah. There was a time where treating stroke was an entirely different enterprise. Really, when Alan started doing the neurointerventional programming here at Vietnam, and I'm proud to have been supportive of that for probably going on two decades now. Stroke was something we rushed into the hospital, but there was no specific protocols in place. It was different hospital to hospital. And while it was more than occasional, it definitely wasn't the 200 plus cases Alan and his colleagues are doing today. Historically, what happened was in 2013, we were dismayed to find out, although it would have been a little better for your call life, Alan, that stroke mechanical thrombectomy didn't seem to work. Three poorly designed trials hit the scene at the exact same time. We talked about that here at Veith, and a lot of agreement was made between the neurologists, neurosurgeons, neurointerventional radiologists who are so focused on treatment of those diseases. Two years later, two short years later, there were three trials near simultaneously that came out in support of stroke, and our world has really never been the same. Alan, how has the positive stroke trials that continue to come and come and come again after uh, 2015, now we're seeing trials that support large core infarcts and things of that sort. How, how has it changed both your practice and how you think of the programming you put together at Veith, maintaining cutting edge? Um, thank you for the historical background, which is very important for people to know. For many, many years, patients with a stroke would come into the emergency room, can't move their arm or their leg, or can't speak, or they would die. It's the fifth um, leading cause of death in the country, the number one cause of disability in our country for adult patients. And so gradually after 2015, within the first two years, we've astronomically grown our interventional stroke practice. When you can go in and put a catheter in safely and do a thrombectomy, 30 to 40% of patients will completely reverse their stroke. Another 30% of the patients will actually improve over the next three months. Before that, almost always, they would get an aspirin and try to go to rehabilitation. It's a dramatic difference in patients and families' quality of life. It's dramatically changed my call life, but honestly, it's so worth it for our patients. It's um, something that I never thought would happen, but through active meetings such as Veith Symposium, where companies 
um, look at how we use devices as physicians and they go on and improve them with their great engineering staffs and go through clinical trials. We now have the ability to navigate from the groin or from the wrist to the brain in 20 or 30 minutes, remove a clot, and hopefully improve a patient's life. Thank you, Alan. When I was growing up, there was a commercial on TV. I don't think it's true anymore. Wednesday is Sunday at Carvel. Thursday is Cerebrovascular Day at Veith. And year after year, Alan puts together just cutting-edge programming ranging from medical stroke doctors, world-class stroke neurologists, open cerebrovascular surgeons, mixed endovascular cerebrovascular surgeons, neurointerventional radiologists. Alan, do you think it's a testament to the quality of the meeting or the quality of the sessions, the types of speakers you're able to bring on an annual basis uh, to New York in November? It's a testament to how large this meeting has become, and people want to come to New York City, want to come to the VEATH Symposium every year because of the cutting-edge scientific talks that are out there. Many times we present new information from journals that were just published about the best stroke trials. Similar to what tension is this year, where now we're able to treat large core strokes and still do thrombectomy with bringing patients back from uh, by at least one MRS level. And so we have a lot of positive trials that are presented at the same time of year, and people want to be in New York City. The other thing I think the Veet Symposium was uh, early on understood, bringing people together that are from different backgrounds. When you have a vascular surgeon or interventional radiologist at the same conference, they actually have different points of view that benefit each in a different way. And we respect each other's backgrounds, and we learn from the neurologist, the neurosurgeon, and the neuroradiologist together here at the stroke meeting. So I think it's a combination of great science at the lectures and a great forum in New York City. That, that's, uh, that sounds completely right. I would say Dr. Veith taught me something years ago that I have utilized again and again in conferences, which is that longer is not uh, better, which is good given my verticality, but as it relates to talks, he said many years ago, if you can't get the salient points out in five or seven minutes, I think at that time it was five minutes, we have a luxurious seven minutes, you probably aren't focusing on the right things. I have employed that again and again, not specifically seven minutes um, in every forum, but speeding up the number of uh, not the number, speeding up the talk so as to allow a greater number of topics. And I think people love that. So kudos to Dr. Veith for teaching me that. Kudos to you, Alan, for always staying current. I mean, you have to get the uh, talks uh, agreed on, etc., months and months in advance. Yet year after year, people come to this conference and learn things about stroke and other cerebrovascular diseases. In fact, Alan, we should probably take a minute to make the point for those that are interested in learning more about cerebrovascular that while Alan and I are using stroke as a catch-all, it really is a lot bigger than stroke. We talk about open approaches to aneurysm repair, to AVM treatment, microsurgical approaches, radiosurgery, and of course, embolotherapy, the types of things that neurointerventionalists of all uh, shades uh, and different specialties do. There is uh, a constant reinforcement of outstanding people that are coming from all over the world, as far away as Boston, uh, to, to speak and be a part of this conference. Alan, what are you thinking of highlighting next year? Can I put you on the spot? Um, of, of course, we're going to highlight our great speakers from Harvard and everywhere else in the world. But the change in stroke that is happening every year, when now we are considering treating patients who may never have been considered one or two years ago because their CT showed there is a, a 50 cc volume of stroke. Now that we have evidence, we'll be treating many more people similar to what cardiologists do. So the stroke field on its science and literature is growing to treat more patients, which is good. We're going to certainly learn how to do it more efficiently. And I think we're also going to see on Thursday in our stroke meeting how aneurysm treatment is becoming almost entirely treated endovascularly, or at least 80 or 90 percent now in most major medical centers, which 20 years ago, or 25 years ago, it was 100% done open vascular neurosurgery. 
And so we have a great team of neurosurgeons, neurologists, and uh, radiologists treating the same disease and bring a lot of complementary information to the table. In our talks today at the V Symposium and on Thursday, the highest level of imaging really makes a difference in all of our fields. And understanding what imaging brings to the table to make a clearer um, picture for us and to approach our patients is important. And I think we all heard today some really interesting talks on artificial intelligence, how it's gonna make our lives better, patients' lives better, and make it more efficient to treat patients in an expedient manner. Two trials have come out that suggest, or at least people suggest that they suggest, I would say it's a misinterpretation, that the networks we've been working so hard to build of primary stroke centers, thrombectomy capable stroke centers, and comprehensive stroke centers are antiquated. These uh, trials are RACECAT and uh, triage, I think the other one is called, and uh, they're being broadcast widely as saying there really isn't a benefit for comprehensive uh, stroke care services. Now there are many, many limitations that the authors generally don't acknowledge up front. Like for example, this was done in the Catalonian region in Spain. But I know for a fact that centers not that far from here are relying on the data from these trials to change the paradigm we consider so mission critical for stroke. I'm thinking that'll be a hot topic still next year, Alan. What do you think? I think absolutely. Um, it's hard to know without reading all the data, but I think there's opportunity, as you just said. No one knows the data better than you do. And uh, what's interesting is I'm standing next to a um, Neiman Center expert on healthcare policy. There's no one better than to um, understand the healthcare exchange with um, insurance companies in the cost of stroke care. These procedures weren't done 15 years ago or, or seven years ago maybe. What do you think the health care cost and reimbursement will change in the next few years? Well, nothing for the good, and I should acknowledge that Dr. Veith, Dr. Brook, Dr. Cinnamon have been visionary in incorporating healthcare policy and economics into these conversations about stroke and cerebrovascular disease. One of the nice things, and thank you for the shout out for the Neiman Health Policy Institute, where, by way of disclosure, I'm grant supported. When you think about health policy, you think about how you impact patients across the spectrum. As doctors, we're typically thinking about the patient right in front of us, and that's where our focus should be. But if we want to think about equitable care, sustainable care, these are things that health policy can help us with. Right now, medicine is under incredible pressure. CMS, and we're not going to talk about this on Thursday, there's just too many topics. CMS has confirmed a 3.4% cut to the conversion factor, a lot of which is based on, I think, flawed implementation of something called G2211. We face PAYGO restriction, we face sequestration restrictions, all in an inflationary, neutral environment. And what I worry about is not our ability to provide care. I worry about beneficiary access to the care that uh, saves so many lives, as Alan said, with respect to stroke and so many other diseases. There are many other things we could talk about, uh, surprise billing, the No Surprises Act, how uh, administrative overreach is corrupting what could be uh, a really positive thing. But, but for now, I won't go off on those tangents. I'll just say kudos to Dr. Veith, kudos to Dr. Cinnamon, kudos to Dr. Brook for recognizing this is an opportunity to educate and potentially, if people agree, advocate for best care for our patients. Thank you, Josh. Um, one of the other things that the Veith Symposium has brought together is when doctors come from Asia, Europe, all over North and South America, as well as every continent in the world. We learn from Australian colleagues, we learn from Middle Eastern colleagues, that how to take care of a patient is different in every place. Not only because their biology is different, because resources are different, but we all learn from each other. And this conference has brought people from all over the world to, to co, um, co collaborate together and really we learn from each other in, in a great spirit of uh, collegiality. And it brings together further conferences where you're invited to their countries and you see what healthcare is like elsewhere and you appreciate what we have at home and also how we can improve on all aspects of science of healthcare as well as the um, healthcare economics as well. And all this is to improve patient care at all times. 
in working in the Bronx as well, you, you have a different health care politics than in California or in Iowa or anywhere else. So we, we cross-pollinate each other with our knowledge, and it's really fun to collaborate together on these topics. Well, I think it's probably time to close. This meeting has been a mainstay, I think, except during COVID, of the New York City scene. You probably can hear the New York City scene around as Dr. Brooke and I speak about it. Kudos to Dr. Veith on 50 amazing years. I don't know how he does it, but it's incredible. Kudos to Dr. Brooke on about 25 years of stroke and neurointerventional programming at Veith. I congratulate the entire team, and I look forward to another 50 years when we're celebrating the century anniversary of this wonderful meeting. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Dr. Veith. Very well said, Dr. Hirsch. Pleasure. Thank you.